All right, we're going to cover chapter 36, which is electrochemistry. Back in general chemistry one, and also at the beginning of this semester, we covered the half reaction method for balancing oxidation reduction uh, equations. Oxidation reduction reactions always involve a transfer of electrons from one species to another. This is why we refer to them as redox reactions, as a reduction in an oxidation process. Both have to be present for the whole reaction to occur. Something's going to be given up electrons and something else has to be taken them all. Oxidation, as definite, by definition, is just something that loses electrons. Basically, it goes to a higher oxidation state. Example here, iron 2 goes to iron 3. It went from a low oxidation state to a higher oxidation state. In the process, it gives up an electron. Okay, So anytime we're talking about an oxidation, it will be producing electrons. Okay, It will be on the product side. Reduction is a gain of electrons. Basically, it's going to a lower oxidation state. Okay, so we can look at the same reaction, but look at the opposite. I'm going from an iron 3 to an iron 2. In that process, it has taken on an electron. Okay, so for reductions, electrons are going to be on the reactant side. We also discussed earlier about you can look at it in terms of gaining oxygens or losing oxygens or gaining hydrogens or losing oxygens to determine what's being oxidized or reduced as well. An oxidizing agent is a species that oxidizes another species. It itself is reduced. So we're talking about a species that undergoes reduction. It takes on electrons, so it allows something else to be oxidized. That species is an oxidizing agent. A reducing agent is a species that reduces another species. It itself is oxidized. So that species basically is giving up electrons, undergoing the oxidation process, so it's allowing something else to be reduced. That species is referred to as a reducing agent. Let's get a reaction. This is a balanced redox equation. It's a simple one. Let's break it down, look at it. We see, let's look at iron. Iron is going from iron zero, its elemental state, to iron two plus. Well, what is happening in that process? Well, it is basically given up to electrons become positively charged. So that is an oxidation process. Since iron is given up to electrons, it's allowing something else to be reduced, which in this case is copper. Therefore, the iron solid, okay, that iron solid is a reducing agent. Okay, the iron solid is a reducing agent. Let's look at the copper. It's going from 2 plus to 0. So in that case, it has basically taken on two electrons to go to a lower oxidation state, so that is a reduction. Since that copper is taken on two electrons, it's allowing something else to be oxidized. So that copper two, okay, in this particular case, is my oxidizing agent. Okay, the copper two is the oxidizing agent. Now we could balance this by the redox method. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll write down what's being reduced, which is my copper 2 going to copper, and I need to balance char atoms, which is one copper on both sides, and I have to balance charges. So now I have two pluses on the copper and two electrons coming from uh, two electrons. That's a total of a zero charge on my reactant side, and that copper solid is a zero charge, so that's a balanced half reaction. Do the same thing with the oxidation. I have iron going to iron 2. I got zero electrons. Zero charge on my reactant side, two plus on my product side. I need to balance it. The only thing I use is electrons, so I need two electrons on the product side. So now I got to balance zero on my reactant and a total charge of zero on my product side. I need to make sure the number of electrons is balanced between them, but you can see something's given up to and species is uh, taken on to. So I don't need to multiply by any factors. So basically my electrons cancel, bring down everything, and I have my balance equation which is the equation that I told you earlier we were dealing with. In this chapter, you will have to balance redoxes, but it's going to be a little easier than what we're doing at the beginning of the semester because typically you'll be given the whole half reaction with the potential 
uh, voltage with it. Okay, so you had the electrons and you had the species. All you're going to have to do is balance the redox, the, the, the reduction and red oxidation with the same number of electrons by multiplying by some factor and add it up. So it's a little bit easier in this chapter than what we were discussing back at the beginning of the semester. In this chapter, we will show how a cell is constructed to physically separate an oxidation reduction reaction into two half reactions. Let's look at um, a case of looking in the same flask first. So let's talk about that. Okay, let's say I had a piece of copper metal and I placed it in some silver nitrate solution. Okay, that silver nitrate is going to have silver ions and nitrate ions, and I have this piece of metal. Uh, a spontaneous reaction that's going to occur is that silver is going to want to be reduced and copper is going to be oxidized. Now we're going to talk about this later about how can I how do I know that copper wants to be um, oxidized and silver reduced in a spontaneous reaction. I'll show you how to look at the potentials and decide what's a spontaneous reaction. But in this case, I'm telling you that's a spontaneous reaction. So what's going to happen is silver plus is going to be reduced to silver solid, and it's going to plate out on that copper. Okay, kind of like electroplating. You know, that's how you get gold on rings. Okay, basically electroplating process. So what, over time, what happens is that silver is going to start plating out on that piece of copper, forming silver solid. At the same time, copper is going to be oxidized. So it's going to form copper 2 plus, and copper 2 plus tends to have a blue color to it. So that solution is going to start to have a blue tint to it because it's coming from that copper ion that's being produced. Now all this is happening in the same cell. Instead of having the same cell, I could separate the two cell, uh, the two the oxidation reduction to two separate cells, okay? And I can harness that energy in the form of electricity. So I can take this and break it up into something called an electrochemical cell. One cell, I will have my oxidation going on, okay? And the other cell, I have my reduction. So I can have my copper going to copper 2 plus in one cell and my silver plus going to silver in the other cell. So my oxidation reduction cells are separate. What happens when I do this is I can harness the energy associated with this process and form electricity. Now there's no interaction between the substances either now. I don't have copper, I don't have silver plating out on copper anymore. There's two separate solutions, so I don't have that issue anymore than being in the same container. Which means that I can use the same electro over and over if I wanted to. I don't have other species plating out on it. Okay, we'll discuss this later as we go. Now, the same reactions happen in both cases. Nothing has changed as such made it happen in one flask compared to two. And all I'm doing is transferring electrons from one species to the other. Okay, so I've taken the energy and I've basically taken and formed a voltage of electricity by separating the two components and I'm taking the oxidation which is producing electrons and it's being given to the reduction side of the cell where it takes it on and it reduces the silver. The reduction going on here is silver plus is forming silver solid. Okay, with one electron to balance the equation. The oxidation is copper going to copper 2 with two electrons to balance the oxidation. To balance the whole thing, since it's one electron being reduced, two electrons being produced in the oxidation, I got to multiply the silver by 2, which then gives me my raw equation is copper plus two silver ions gives me copper 2 plus plus two silver solids. It's the same reaction whether I got it in the same flask or a separate flask. Okay. But by separating the two, I can get generated electricity, which is more useful and something we're going to talk about in this chapter. The force with, elect with which electrons travel from the oxidation half reaction to the reduction half reaction is measured as voltage. Actually, we're producing some electricity. Electrochemical cell is a system consistent of electrodes that dip into electrolyte in which the chemical reaction either uses or generates electric current. So there's two processes. One process is called voltaic or galvanic cell. It's an electrochemical cell in which a spontaneous reaction generates an electric current. Basically, we actually produce in voltage. The reaction will occur on its own. It's a spontaneous reaction. Example of that would be the one I just talked about. If I take a piece of copper metal and place that in some silver solution, 
Okay, that's a spontaneous reaction. Silver is going to be reduced to silver solid, and copper is going to be formed copper two plus. Okay, and that silver is going to um, play it out on that piece of copper. That's a spontaneous reaction. I can separate those two components and have a voltaic cell, electrochemical cell, and produce electricity, a positive voltage. Or <clears throat> an electrolytic cell can be formed, and that is electrolyte electrochemical cell in which electric current drives an otherwise non-spontaneous reaction. In other words, there's negative voltage. I gotta put energy into the system, voltage into the system. The reaction does not occur on its own. It need its own, it needs some outside source. I could take that same example we just did, but flip it. Let's have a piece of silver metal and place that into some copper two solution. Okay. I'm going to put that together, and what's going to happen is nothing. It's a non-spontaneous reaction, so copper is not going to play it on that piece of silver. It will just stay that piece of silver and copper, and that copper solution. It will stay just like that because it's a non-spontaneous reaction. However, if I put some uh, power into the system, put some voltage into that system, I can cause the reaction to happen. That's an electrolytic cell. Okay, that's a case where it otherwise wouldn't happen on its own. So since I'm putting voltage into the system, you get a negative voltage for an electrolytic cell. Voltaic cell consists of two half cells that are electrically connected. Each half cell is a portion of the electrochemical cell in which a half reaction takes place. No reaction between the species involved, just a transfer of electrons. So you have your oxidation process um, sending off over electrons to the reduction process in a different flask. A simple half cell can be made from a metal strip dipped into a solution of a metal ion. For example, a silver-silver ion half cell consists of a silver strip dipped into a solution of silver salt. So I have a silver nitrate solution, which is my salt, and I take a piece of silver metal and dip it into there. And basically, I can connect that piece of metal uh, to another cell, okay, where electrons can be transferred over to the other cell if I'm talking about silver being um, oxidized, or if silver is being reduced, electrons can come over to the this cell on according to that wire and to that electrode. That way we can have the reduction. That piece of metal is what we refer to as an electrode. Okay, that silver piece of metal is the electrode that's attached to the wire that goes on to the other cell. Here's a cell, okay, a complete cell. Let's talk about it. Okay, we can see that we have this piece of metal right here. It's made out of cadmium. That's an electrode, okay. This other piece of metal on the other uh, flask is an electrode as well. It's made out of silver. So I have a cadmium electrode and a silver electrode. On the left side, we have an oxidation going on. Okay, we have the oxidation of cadmium going to cadmium 2 plus. Okay, generate two electrons. So as this process is going on, I have cadmium coming off of that electrode forming cadmium 2 plus in the solution. The two electrons then then we'll travel along the wire, and if I have a voltmeter or a light in there, I can light up the light bulb because I'm generating electricity, or if I have a voltmeter, I can measure the voltage associated with this process. And electrons come down over here, so then I have my electrons over here. The silver then takes on the electrons, okay, and then it forms silver solid, plates out on that electrode. So I'm plating silver on silver. So I don't have any interaction between the substances. Okay, so I can reuse that electrode later on. So on this side of the reaction, what we have is a reduction. I have silver plus taking on that electron and being reduced to silver. Okay. And in fact, since it's sending over two electrons at one time, I'll have two silvers uh, being played out based to the, on our balance equation, which we'll see on the next slide. For electricity to flow, it has to have a complete circuit. So I need the flow of electricity to be a, a circle, basically. I need a complete circuit. So to complete that circuit, I have the electrodes attached by a wire. I have to also add this salt bridge okay, on into this to connect the two flasks. OK, 
kind of have to have a salt bridge, basically something to connect it to complete the circuit. Now, it's a salt bridge because I need that salt to do something else, which we'll talk about later. Okay, but that salt bridge is more than just complete the circuit. It also does something else to allow this process to happen. On the left side, okay, we have the oxidation process occurring. The electrode is referred to the anode when it's on the oxidation side. Okay, so that electrode in the oxidation process is referred to as the anode. And it has a negative charge on it, negative sign on that electrode, because electrons are coming from that electrode. On the other side, okay, that's where the electrons are flowing, okay, so we give that a positive charge, okay, and we all refer to that as the cathode, okay, so where the reduction is occurring in the other cell is referred to as the cathode. Something keep important, if I say anode or say cathode, you know that the cathodes are where reductions occurring and anodes where the oxidation is occurring when we're discussing a voltaic cell. Okay, that's what we're describing here, a voltaic cell or galvanic cell. This particular reaction is a spontaneous reaction. It's going to occur on its own. That's why it's a voltaic cell. I can make the other process happen. I can make silver oxidized and cadmium reduced, but then I would have to put power into the system. I have to add voltage to it by using a power supply to make that happen. When we were talk more about electrolytic cells later on in this chapter. In a voltaic cell, two half cells are connected in such a way that electrons flow from one middle electrode to the other through an external circuit. In this particular case, silver is being reduced and cadmium is being oxidized. What is the balance equation? Well, silver plus one electron gives me silver. For my cathode, that's my reduction. For my anode, the oxidation is cadmium going to cadmium two plus plus two electrons. Okay, so I balance my atoms and charges. I also need to make that silver happen twice because I need my electrons to balance. So I need to multiply by that two factor. That way I can get my two electrons to cancel. So it must happen twice. Add them up. My overall balance equation is two silver ions plus cadmium solid. It gives me two silver solids plus cadmium two plus. This is what we refer to as the net reaction that occurs in this voltaic cell. It is called the cell reaction. Okay, it is referred to as the cell reaction. This is what we're trying to measure. We want to know the voltage of this particular cell reaction. When I have two silver pluses plus cadmium, give me two silver solids plus cadmium two plus, how much voltage is associated with that process? This is what we're going to try to measure, and we're going to show you how to calculate that number as we go on in this chapter. Note that the electrons are given up at the anode, that negative uh, terminal. And thrust flow to it to the cathode, flow from it to the cathode, which has the positive terminal, okay, where the reduction occurs. So your anode is your negative, and that's where the oxidation occurs, and your cathode is the positive, and that's where the reduction occurs. As long as there is an external circuit, electrons can flow through it from one electrode to the other. Because cadmium has a greater tendency to lose electrons than silver, cadmium atoms in the cadmium electrode lose electrons to form cadmium ions. Cadmium prefers the oxidation process compared to the silver. Silver prefers to be reduced in comparison to cadmium. Eventually I'm going to show you how to decide that I know that cadmium is going to be uh, wants to be oxidized more than silver wants to be oxidized. Okay, eventually I'll show you by looking at potentials, potential voltages, voltages to decide which one's going to be a spontaneous reaction. In this particular, particular case, I know that cadmium being oxidized and silver being reduced is a spontaneous reaction. I could force it the other way if I wanted, but then I would have to put power into the system to make it happen and make that electrolytic cell. Electrons flow, flow through the external circuit to the silver electrode, where silver ions gain the electrons to become silver metal. 
The anode, where the oxidation occurs in the voltaic cell, has a negative sign because electrons flow from it. The cathode, which is the reduction in the voltaic cell, has a positive sign. In a spontaneous reaction, cadmium will be oxidized and silver will be reduced. As I said later on, I'll show you how you can look at those to decide what would be the spontaneous process. The two half cells must also be connected internally to allow ions to flow between them and complete the circuit. That's where that salt bridge comes in. It's important because it completes the circuit, but it also is there for a couple other reasons. Let's discuss those. Without that internal connection, meaning that salt bridge, there will be too much positive charge built up in that cadmium half cell. There will be too much negative charge in, and also be too much negative charge in the silver half cell. Okay, what's happening is I'm taking cadmium solid and making cadmium 2 plus. So I have an excess of plus 2 ions. I need a counter ion, some negative charge to balance that out. On the other side, as my silver plus is plating out to form silver solid, I got some nitrate ions that are building up. I need some positive charge to balance that out. I can't just have an excess of positive charge in one flask and an excess of positive charge in a negative flask. I need some counter ion to that to balance it out. And that's what that calcium chloride salt bridge is doing. Okay. Let's look at that. Let's look at the electrochemical cell on the right here. What's happening over time is that we see that we have some zinc ions being made on the oxidized, oxidation side of, the, side of this electrochemical cell. Okay, so I got an oxidation going on, so I'm producing I'm producing zinc plus. Well, I'm going to have an excess buildup of that zinc 2 plus charge. I need some counter ion there to, to offset that. I can't just have that zinc 2 plus building up. If it does, what's going to happen is the reaction is going to stop because it needs to be balanced. So over time, that zinc 2 plus will be balanced off by that salt bridge. The salt bridge can supply some chlorine ions to balance it out. Since zinc is a 2 plus, two Cl minuses will come out to balance it out. So eventually I'll be at a zinc chloride solution on my oxidation side. On the other side, my copper 2 plus is plating out as copper solid. So I'm losing copper 2 plus ions, which means I'm having an excess of NO3 minus. I have nitrate ions. For every one copper 2 plus that plates out, I got two nitrate ions. So on the other side of the coin here, I have potassium now that can migrate into that solution and balance that off. So for those two NO3 minuses, two potassium ions will come out and I'm making a potassium nitrate solution on my reduction side. I need to have those ions balance out by charges. Okay? I can't just have an excess of charge. If I do, the reaction's going to stop. So a salt bridge is a tube of electrolyte in a gel that is connected to the two half cells. The salt bridge allows the flow of ions but prevents the mixing of the different solutions that would allow direct reaction of the cell reactants. Basically it's allowing for me to have my two cells separated and then I just have a transfer of electrons. There's no interaction between the, the two species. I can keep my cadmium in one, I keep my silver in the other one, and there's no interaction. I mean, it allows me to use my electrodes over and over. I don't have any interaction between the substances. It's also important <clears throat> because it completes the circuit. For electricity to flow, I need to have a circle. Okay, I have to have a complete circuit. And lastly, it keeps electrically statically neutral, okay, meaning I have zinc 2 plus being formed. I got to have some counter ion for that zinc, which would be chlorine and minus two of them, as I showed you a second ago. The nitrate ions are building up. I need potassium to counteract that. And that salt bridge is supplying those ions to keep that electric static neutral. The voltage produced is from the potential difference between the two metals at any instance. It is a measure of the tendency of the cell reaction to proceed toward equilibrium. So the driving force is trying to get to equilibrium. Okay? So the concentration of the species affects how far you're away from equilibrium. Equilibrium is the driving force of reaction. As reaction proceeds, the potential difference decreases. 
continuously and approaches zero as the equilibrium approach. So the drive enforces it wants to get the equilibrium, so it's trying to get there and get to that point. There's not an infinite amount of electricity, okay? When it finally approaches that equilibrium and gets the equilibrium, then you have zero voltage. In other words, a dead battery. So if you have a battery, basically it's charged up, it's got some concentration of species, it's driving that reaction to, to, to it reaches equilibrium, and then you have zero volts. The concentration of the species has effect on equilibrium and the amount of voltage. The further away from equilibrium, the higher the potential difference. So if I have a one molar solution versus a two molar solution, there's a different voltage associated with them because concentration affects that voltage of how far I am away from equilibrium. In essence, what you have when you have a um, rechargeable battery, you live in both worlds. You got your voltaic and your electrolytic cell. As you're using the battery, it's a voltaic cell. It's got some concentrations. It's away from equilibrium. It's working toward equilibrium. When it gets there, it has zero voltage. Then you take that battery and you put it in a, a, a charger and you stick it in the wall. Well, now you're doing an electrolytic cell. You're putting the voltage into the cell to push that equilibrium away from that. Um, away from equilibrium and charging the battery again and then you can reuse use the battery. It was convenient to have shorthand way of designating cells. A cell consisting of a cadmium cadmium ion half cell and a silver silver ion is written as follows. Cadmium solid uh, straight line, cadmium 2 plus, aqueous, double line, silver plus, aqueous, line, silver solid. Now, we need to talk about what all these lines and, and what uh, what's being oxidized, what's being reduced. How do I tell that in this uh, short notation? Well, basically, everything on the left side of your short notation is what's being oxidized. Okay, Everything on the right side is what's being reduced. So on the left side, okay, the things on the left side... Or, or basically what's being oxidized, that is your anode. So that's telling me what's the anode in my uh, cell. On the right side, the species on the right side is what's being reduced. That's your cathode. Now, you may or may not have that double line, okay? You may, but still, if you have the double line or don't have the double line, the things on the left side tend to be your oxidation, your anode, and the things on the right side are your cathode, your reduction species. So the anode is written on the left, and the cathode is written on the right. Now what is that double line? That double line indicates that this cell has a salt bridge present. It means I have the two components separated by a salt bridge. Okay, I have an electrochemical cell with two cells with a salt bridge connected. Now, can I have a cell without the salt bridge? Yes, I can do the same thing in the same solution I want. I just have that interaction between the substances. So I'm going to have things plating out on a my metals, etc. So if I want to separate them, I need a salt bridge, but I can do it in the same container. So you could have a short notation that doesn't have a salt bridge. It just means it's in the same container. Okay. On the outside of that short notation, in this case the zinc solid and the copper solid, that's an indication of what the cell terminals are made of. Okay, so the cell terminals are at the extreme ends of the cell notation. That's the electrometal. What is the metal made of? And it may or may not be part of the reaction. Okay, in this case, I got zinc solid forming zinc 2 plus, and I got copper 2 plating out copper on the copper electrode. But it's possible that it may not have any solid involved in my reaction. For example, I may have iron 2 going to iron 3. That's an aqueous ion forming an aqueous ion. There's no solid involved. So I can have some other inert electrode as part of my electrode. I can have it a platinum or a carbon electrode that has nothing to do with it. It won't be involved in any of the calculations. It's just there for the electrons to be there to be oxidized or reduced, whatever the case may be, for the species. Okay. So in this case, I got iron 2 going to iron 3. I may have some electrode, and that electrode may be some platinum metal, and it's just there for the source, since this is being oxidized, that's where my electrons will go and flow up, okay, to the uh, reduction on the other side.
Same thing happens when I'm talking about a gas. Gases don't have any solids. So if I'm talking about going from a gas to an aqueous ion, etc., they we have some inert electro. Okay, the single line. That single line indicates a uh, phase a phase boundary, such as between a solid terminal and electrode. So basically there's a change of state. Okay? Most of the time, the states are emitted. They don't put the solid there for the zinc and the aqueous. Most of the time, there are no states there. You should know what the states are. Okay? Uh, but that single line indicates some change, that we're changing states, basically. Now, how would I write it, say, for the iron 2 going to iron 3, since there's no change in state? They're both aqueous. Well, I wouldn't have a single line. I basically would just write a comma. I would say iron two, comma, iron two, comma, iron three. Okay, I'm not going to write a vertical line because there's no change in phase. It's the same phase. They're going from aqueous to aqueous. All right, since we know that the left side is your anode and the right side is your cathode, we can write our balance equation now. So since the anode on the left side means that oxidation is occurring to the zinc, okay, I can write that half reaction. And on the right side, the cathode is reduction. I can write that half reaction. Let's do the reduction first. I know that copper two is going to copper solid. And then I got to balance the atoms, which is one copper on both sides, and then balance the charges, which means I add two electrons on my reactant side. And then the zinc we know is now being oxidized. So I got zinc going to zinc 2 plus. Need to balance atoms. It's one to one, not a problem. But then the charges, I got to add two electrons on my product side to balance my, um, my charges. Add them up. My overall balance equation is zinc solid plus copper 2 plus gives me copper solid plus zinc 2 plus. That is the cell reaction that we would like to in the future determine the voltage of. All right, when the half reaction involves a gas or could be an aqueous to aqueous situation, an inert material such as platinum or carbon serves as the terminal in the electrode surface on which the reaction will occur. That's where the electrons will be We'll, we'll go to the other side of the, the cell, okay? You all come, come down, depending on which process we're talking about. Example is a hydrogen electrode. The hydrogen bubbles over a platinum plate immersed in an acidic solution. This is an important electrode. This is why I've referenced electrode, so it's a very important one that we talk about a lot. But let's look at it. you got two H pluses form plus two electrons give me H2 gas, okay? So this is my balance half reaction. Notice it's going from an aqueous to a gas in this cathode, cathode process, reduction. I could go the other way. I could have hydrogen gas going to H+, plus, okay, which is the oxidation of the anode. Okay. But in any case, let's look at the actual uh, electrode. Okay. What you have is this platinum electrode, which is this platinum piece of metal. That's a piece of metal that's platinum. Okay. You have your H plus ions, your aqueous solution, okay, and you have your hydrogen gas. So if we were talking about this as being a reduction, what's going to happen is my electrons will flow down that electrode, and then my H plus will take on those electrons and be reduced, and then produce H2 gas. Okay. Or the other process, it could be a case where hydrogen gas is giving up electrons and electrons are flowing through the electrode over to the other cell. Now, how do we write that in notation if we're dealing with an um, inert electrode? Okay, well, let's look at the hydrogen electrode as a cathode. Well, we will have our H plus. Okay, this is written as a cathode, meaning a reduction. So I've got my H plus going to H2. So you can see it's being reduced. Okay, it's being reduced. I have my interface line between my H plus and my H2. And then I have another interface line between my H2 and my platinum, which is my electrode. That platinum is no part of the equation other than that short notation. Now we said this is as a cathode, so in essence, if this was a whole cell written, then I'm talking about having some salt bridge and an anode to the left of it. 
and this is how I'd write it to the right, okay? Got my reduction, H plus going to H2, and I have a platinum electrode. Now I could write this as an anode as well. How would that look? Well, you're talking about your H2 gas, your zero state, going to a plus one state. You can see I'm being oxidized and going from a zero state to a plus one state. Once again, I have my interface line. And what we're talking about, since this is an anode, so we're talking about having a salt bridge and some cathode on the other side. Okay, and that's how I would write my half reaction for my hydrogen electrode as an anode. Now, sometimes, instead of writing this all out, they just write SHE, meaning standard hydrogen electrode. And since it's a standard electrode, that means I know the concentration in the partial pressure, which is one atmosphere for the hydrogen gas and one molarity for the concentration of my acid. Okay, so sometimes I write it as S. H E. I mean, you gotta know what that means. It's a standard hydrogen electrode, which means I know the concentration in the partial partial pressure of that hydrogen gas. The standard, st standard hydrogen electrode is important to us because that's gonna we're gonna talk about more. That is our reference electrode for all the potentials that we have in our table, and I'll talk more about that later. To fully specify. A cell is necessary to give the concentration of the solutions and the pressures of the gases. Okay, let's look at this uh, notation. Zinc, zinc 2 plus, and I got parentheses of one molarity. I got H plus, parentheses one molarity, H2, parentheses one atmosphere, and then I have platinum. Okay, that concentration is important. Okay, it has to have the concentrations in your cell notation to let us know whether we have a standard cell or not. These are all one molarity and one atmosphere because this is a standard cell. If they want one molarity, then I got to do more work after I calculate the, constant, the, the voltage of the standard cell. Okay, all our potentials are based on standard. Okay, so if they're not a standard cell, then we got to do something to fix that. Notice there's no states. Okay, we don't usually write states, and also notice there's no spectators. Typically, the spectator ions are not written either. Okay, they're not involved in the reaction, so they're the spectators, so they're not put in there. So, I have my information on the left side and I have my information on the right side. The stuff on the left side I know is what's going on in the oxidation on my anode and the stuff on the right side is my cathode or my uh, reduction. So I can draw myself from this information. Let's go ahead, since I have a salt bridge, I have that double line, I'm going to write it as two different containers. Okay, I'll write one species as one container as my oxidation and anode and one as my reduction and cathode. On the left side is my oxidation, so I know that zinc's being oxidized. My, my terminal on the far left is zinc, so that means my cell contains a zinc electrode, and it's in some zinc solution, which is a concentration of one molarity, zinc 2 plus at one molarity. On the right side, you can see my cell terminal, okay, that far outside. It's platinum, so I have a platinum electrode, and I have a concentration of my acid is one molarity, and I have some partial pressure of hydrogen of one atmosphere. So I have my two half cells broken up. Now I have to complete the circuit. I need the whole thing connected. So I need to know how this is going to be connected. Well, that double line tells me that there's a salt bridge. Okay, so I can go ahead and connect it with a salt bridge. Then I also need to connect my electrodes with a wire and I need to figure out which way the electrons are going to flow. Well my oxidation process is going to give up the electrons and my reduction is going to take on the electrons which means in this case it's going to flow from the zinc electrode to the platinum electrode and then I need to label my terminals. We said where the oxidation occurs that's my anode and that's my negative terminal and where electrons flow to that's going to be my cathode and that's going to be my positive terminal. So I can finish my uh, diagram by connecting a wire between the zinc and the platinum, give it a negative terminal for the anode and a positive terminal for my cathode and show that my electrons are flowing from the left to the right. I can also write the balance equation for this. So for my oxidation process I had zinc being oxidized. Okay, so I got to balance that. So zinc, zinc, that's one in each, but I got to balance the charges, that means I had two electrons. Need to balance my reduction, so I got H plus going to H2, so I need two H's, which means then I need two electrons to balance that. Uh, I don't need to multiply by any factors because my electrons cancel. 
balance it out. I get my cell reaction is 2H plus is plus zinc. Gives me zinc 2 plus plus hydrogen gas. So this is the, the reaction of this cell. Now we ultimately our goal is we want to measure the voltage associated with this. So eventually what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, there's some voltage associated with that oxidation, some re reduction potential for the oxidation. There's some potential reduction for the reduction, a potential uh, for the reduction process. Add those up, and that's going to give me my E of this cell, which is our ultimate goal in this chapter is we want to calculate the E of the cell. Okay, so I know the potential of my oxygen oxidation, the potential of my reduction, add those up, and that gives me the E of the cell. If this is a standard reaction, then that is the total voltage for this reaction. In this case, it is. I got one molarity for each species in one atmosphere. If it's not a standard cell, I'm still going to have to do this plus some more work. I'm going to have to show you that later, but I'll have to correct for not being a standard cell, so I'll take this value and do some more work with it. Okay, But we, this is our ultimate goal. Our ultimate goal is to measure the potential of our cell reaction when we show you how to do this as we go along in this chapter. Alright, let's try it again. Let's try to draw the cell and write the overall cell reaction for the given cell. We've got cadmium solid, cadmium 2 plus with a concentration of 1 molarity, H plus 1 molarity, H2, 1 atmosphere, and platinum. Since everything's 1 molarity and 1 atmosphere, we're talking about a standard cell. Okay. Okay. Well, we know on the left side what's happening, oxidation. On the right side, reduction. Since I have that double line, that means I got a salt bridge. So that means I have um, two cells. So let's go ahead and draw two cells. Okay. So I have an oxidation cell and a reduction cell. Since the left side is my oxidation, I know that cadmium solid is my electrode, and I got a cadmium solution at one molarity. So I'll go ahead and put that in. On the right side is my reduction, okay, which means then that H plus is being reduced to hydrogen gas, and the electrode is made out of platinum. So I'll put that in. Since I had that double line, that means that these are separated and I have a salt bridge connected them. Right, my salt bridge. My electrons will flow from my oxidation to my reduction, so it's going from that cadmium electrode to that platinum, so I draw a line to connect them and show my electrons flowing in that direction. And I will label my terminal as a negative on the cadmium and a positive on the platinum. Which is my schematic for my electrochemical cell. I also can talk about the actual equation going on. So for the oxidation, I go from cadmium to cadmium 2 plus, and I have to balance my electrons by adding two electrons. And for my reduction, I got H plus going to H2, two H pluses to balance the atoms, and then two electrons to balance the charges. Uh, my electrons cancel, and I get an overall cell. Cadmium solid plus two H pluses, Gives me cadmium 2 plus plus hydrogen gas. And once again, our ultimate goal is the potential of the cell. So there's some potential associated with that oxidation process. There's some potential associated with that reduction. I add those numbers up, and I'll get my E of the cell for this reaction. And since this is a standard cell, that would be the E of my reaction for this particular example. If there weren't one molarity up there, then there'd be some other concentrations that I would have to correct for. And I'll still calculate the E of the cell for the standard cell and do a correcting factor for not being a standard cell. As I said, we'll get into that later on in this chapter. That E of the cell, which is referred to as the potential difference, is the difference in electrical potential or electrical pressure between two points. We typically measure that value in a quantity called volts. Okay, we tend to measure that in volts. 
The volt, capital V is its symbol, is the SI unit of the potential difference equivalent to one joule of energy per coulomb when charged. So one volt is equivalent to one joule per coulomb. That's a ratio and that is a conversion factor. One volt is equal to one joule per coulomb. The Faraday constant, symbolized with capital F, is the magnitude of charge of one mole of electrons. It equals 96,500 coulombs. Okay, this gives us another conversion factor. One Faraday is equal to 96,500 coulombs, which is equal to the charge of one mole of electrons. This conversion factor is important for us. In fact, it's going to be very important, an important conversion factor when we talk about the last problem in this chapter. Okay, we're going to have to use this conversion factor to do that calculation. In moving one mole of electrons through a circuit, the numeric value of the work done by the cell is the product of Faraday's constant times the potential difference between the electrodes. In other words, in formula, okay, work is equal to your Faraday's constant times the volts. Remember, Faraday's constants in coulombs, and volts is the same thing as saying joules per coulomb, so my coulombs cancel. Okay, so Faraday times volts will give me joules, which is an energy term. Other thing of importance in this calculation is this minus sign. We're talking about work done by the system, so the total energy is going down, so I've got to have a negative sign to, have to, to indicate that that energy is going down in the system. In normal operation of voltaic cells, the, the pot potential difference, that voltage across the electrodes, is less than the maximum possible voltage of the cell. The actual flow of electrons reduces electrical pressure, therefore there's a slightly lower voltage of chain, obtained. What we're measuring is something called the electromotive force, the EMF of the cell, or E of the cell. The maximum potential difference between the electrodes of that cell. It can be measured by an electronic digital voltmeter. You might recall when we drew our little schematic at the beginning of this chapter, I had a voltmeter or basically a light bulb. When that electron is flowing over, I can measure that difference between those two terminals with a voltmeter and determine the amount of voltage I have. Okay, Or I can connect the light bulb in between and I can generate the electricity to, to, to light that light bulb. A cell EMF is a measure of the driving force of the cell reaction. The reaction at the anode has a definite oxidation potential, while the reaction at the cathode has a definite reduction potential. So I have this potential at both kiss, at the oxidation as well as reduction. Thus, the overall cell Okay, cell EMF is a combination of these, these two potentials. So the E of the cell then is just basically the summation of your reduction potential plus your oxidation potential. If I add these two potentials up, it gives me the overall potential of that cell. A reduction potential is a measure of the tendency to gain electrons in a re reduction half reaction. So look at an example, I'm talking about A plus going to A solid, that's a reduction. Okay, I add one electrons to make a solid. There's a certain voltage associated with that. Let's call it X voltage. Okay, there's a certain voltage associated with that process. We can look at the oxidation half reaction as the reverse of that process. Okay, so if I take about the oxidation potential of an oxidation, for an oxidation half reaction, it is the negative of that reduction potential for the reverse reaction. In other words, I take this previous example and I flip the reaction. Now I'm going A solid going to A plus, which is an oxidation process. Now my potential on that half reaction is a negative X. Okay, it's the same numeric value, but it, now I have a negative sign in front of it because it's the opposite process. So if I'm talking about the reduction potential of something and I want the oxidation potential, I flip the reaction, I change the sign. Now we've done this several times now, we did with K. So if I take K and I flip the reaction, what do we do? 1 over K. If I take delta H and I flip the reaction, what do I do? Minus delta H. Now that I take potential, if I flip the reaction, I change the sign again. Okay, so you got to get these things straight in your head because on the final you have all these things, so you got to know what to do when you flip a reaction. 
Uh, this is important to us because what's going to happen is there's going to be a table of potentials. Okay, and they're all going to be written as reductions. If I want to know the oxidation, I got to take the reaction, flip it, and change the sign. But your givens will typically be given as reduction potentials, and we talk more about that on the next couple of slides. By convention, the table of standard electro potentials are tabulated as reduction potentials. Okay, the first thing to know about these tables that they are all standard reduction potentials, meaning standard, they're all one molarity, one atmosphere, 25 degrees C. That's important because remember concentration changes. Okay, how far you're away from equilibrium. And the other thing is that they're all written as reductions. Okay, so then if you want the oxidation, you're going to have to flip the reaction. Okay, here's a list of some uh, electro potentials. Okay, notice a couple of things in this table. First, okay, all are written as reductions. Every last one of these is written as reduction. You got lithium plus going to lithium solid, H plus going to H two. Every last one of these reactions is written as reduction. So in your tables, they are always written as reductions. On your tests or anything, they be given to you as reductions. So if you need to use an oxidation, you're going to have to. Uh, flipped it and changed the sign. Okay. Next, these are all standard, okay, standard electro potentials, which means they're all at one molarity, one atmosphere, and 25 degrees C. So if we had those conditions, here's our potentials to use to make out the terminal potential of the cell. However, if we're not at those conditions, we're going to have to correct for. Okay, and I'll talk to you more about that later on, or how we correct when they're not a standard cell. But you need to realize these are the potentials for a standard cell, and we need to correct it if they're not. Now, last, um, hydrogen. Okay, notice that it got two H pluses plus two electrons going to be H2 gas, and the voltage is 0 0.00 volt. This is our reference electro. I mean, do you think that hydrogen naturally has a zero voltage? Hopefully the answer for you is no. Okay, what happens is we force that to be zero. This is all on a relative scale again. Everything's relative. We're using that hydrogen as our reference electrode, and we said that's zero. We connected the other electrodes into that, connected it to that hydrogen electrode, and we said any voltages that we got, we gave to that species. Okay, we've seen hydrogen was contributing zero. So what we have is a relative scale. We know how much uh, electro potential is in comparison to hydrogen. Okay, so if we talk about uh, copper 2 plus going to copper solid and we see it's 0.34 that means it's 0.34 volts higher than hydrogen okay if I get a negative say look at zinc it's a negative 0.76 that means it's 0.76 volts less than hydrogen it's a relative scale All right, let's see if we can calculate the potential for a cell now so we're going to take our short notation okay of the zinc copper cell, and we're going to write out and balance our equation and come up with our total uh, voltages for the cell. So looking at this, I got a um, salt bridge and I got some species to the left. So what's happening to zinc since it's on the left side? That's being oxidized. That is my uh, anode. Okay, so I can write that reaction. What's happening to copper on the right, right side? That's reduction. So I can write that half cell. So I got zinc going to zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons is my half reaction, my oxidation. And I have my reduction, which is copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons, giving me copper solid. There's a certain potential associated with my oxidation and a certain potential associated with my reduction. I get those values from that table, all givens to you in the problem. So I'll go back to my table here. And I'll find those two potentials. I see I have copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons gives me copper solid and has a plus 3, 4 volt. Now in our problem, we're using copper as a reduction. Well, it's written in this table as a reduction. So I'll take that 0.34 volts, okay, and I'll use that just like it is, okay, because that's how I'm using that equation. Now for the zinc, it's written in this table as zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons gives me zinc solid. That is a reduction. How are we using it in our problem? We're using it as an oxidation, so what am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to flip that reaction, okay? And what am I going to have to do with that negative 
change the sign. It would have to be a positive 0.76. Okay, so you can see that my potential for my zinc to zinc 2 plus is 0.76. Notice I changed the sign from the table. Okay, I had to change the sign. It was a negative 0.76 as a reduction. Now it's an oxidation. I changed the sign. And I got the 0.34 volts from the copper. I add up my equations and see I got two electrons in both, so I don't have to uh, multiply by any factor. So my electrons cancel, and it ended up zinc plus copper 2 plus gives me zinc 2 plus plus copper. Okay, I add up my potentials, and I get the E of the cell is 1.1 volts. Now since this is a positive voltage, is this an electrolytic or voltaic cell? It's a voltaic because it's a positive, which means it's a spontaneous reaction. It means it's going to happen on its own. Zinc will be oxidized and copper will be reduced if I put them in um, um, in connection with each other. Okay? If I want the other process to happen, if I want copper to be oxidized and zinc to be reduced, I can make it to happen, but I'm going to have to make an electrolytic cell. I'm going to have to put voltage into this system in the form of the opposite of this, a negative 1.10 volts. Okay? It would be the opposite amount, okay? the opposite process. Now, since I have one molarity and one molarity of my ions, okay, this is a standard cell. Since it's a standard cell, then I know this is my final answer. Okay? If it wasn't a standard cell, meaning I didn't have one molarity for both of these or either of those, then I have to do more work. I got to do this on top of a little bit more work to figure out my change, my correcting factor for not being a standard cell. The electropotential is an intensive property whose value is independent of the amount of the species in the reaction. Okay, remember we talked about this when we said the delta H was an extensive property. If I had 5 grams versus 100 grams, the 100 grams is going to produce more heat because it's an extensive property. The amount of the substance dictates how much is going to be forming. Okay, well in this case we're talking about an intensive property. If something is given up uh, in the balance of half reaction, it's given up electrons, okay? It doesn't matter how many electrons the other cell needs, okay? It doesn't matter if it needs one, two, three, or four, okay? It's going to give as many as in, in its half reaction. If it's a half reaction that has two electrons, it's going to give two electrons every time and there's a certain voltage associated with it. If it needs four electrons on the other side, it's not going to double and send four electrons at one time. It's going to send two with the voltage associated with that. And then it sends two more. As long as it keeps on taking it, it's going to keep on sending it. Okay? So it's an intensive property. It doesn't matter. It's a certain amount of voltage associated with that process. Okay? It doesn't matter if the process is going to continue on longer or not. It's going to be a certain voltage associated with it. Okay? So we're not going to double the, the amount of voltage just because we doubled the coefficients on our equation. So, what I'm trying to say is, let's look at copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons gives me copper solid. The voltage associated with the process of sending 2 electrons over is 0.34 volts. Now, say for some reason I went in to double the equation in my uh, calculations, where I multiply copper 2 plus by 2 and the 2 electrons by 2 and the copper solid by 2, I am not going to multiply my voltage by 2. It will stay exactly the same because it's an intensive property. Copper 2 is sent into electrons. If the other cell needs 4 electrons, it's going to wait for it to send 2 more. And that process of sending 2 electrons has 0.34 volts associated with it. Okay, It's not going to double the voltage and send them all at one time. It's just doing its process and sending that uh, voltage across associated with that number of electrons. Now, this becomes important okay, as you go to balance equations. You've got to realize you're not going to double that E. Now, remember, let's recall all we've done because on the final you're going to see all this. Okay, Recall, when we're talking about equilibrium case, we flipped the reaction, we did 1 over K. When I multiplied it, the equation by a factor n, what did we do? We went k to the n power. 
Then we dealt with delta H's. If I flip the reaction, what do we do? Change the sign on that delta H. If I multiply by some factor, we multiply delta H by that factor. Now we have our E's. Let's see how we handle that. If I take the E and I flip the reaction, I change the sign of E. If I multiply that E by some factor, I don't multiply by the factor. It is still E. Okay, so make sure you have in your mind the differences of when you react manipulating equations, be it K, delta H, or E. The standard EMF or the theoretical potential, the E of your cell, is the EMF of a cell operating under standard conditions of concentration, one molarity, one atmosphere pressure, and a temperature of 25 degrees C. Uh, this is what we calculated earlier with our zinc uh, copper cell when we did 1.10 volts. Okay, to measure this, we use those values from a table. Okay, I want to talk about how we develop those p potentials in that table. How do we come up with those numbers? Note that the individual electrical potentials required that we chose uh, choose a, a reference electrode. Arbitrarily, we assign that reference electrode a potential of zero. So what we do is we say, okay, everything's going to go in comparison to that one reference electrode. And that ref reference electrode is going to contribute zero volts to anything that we do when we do the entire electrochemical cell. And we obtain the potentials of the other electrodes by measuring that EMF. Remember, this is a relative scale, not an absolute. So this is in relative to that reference electrode. It's not an absolute. When we say it's point something volts, it's point something volts higher than that reference or negative point something votes, that many votes below the reference electrode. By convention, the reference chosen by comparing electro potentials is the standard hydrogen electrode, okay, or referred to as the SHE, S-H-E. The standard electro potentials are measured relative to this hydrogen reference as the anode. So basically we did our um, a table by taking the standard hydrogen electrode and saying that it is the anode and taking any other species and making it the cathode and ran the reaction. Okay, Whatever voltage we got is what we gave to the um, total other species. We said that the hydrogen electrode was given zero. So all our potential went to that other species. Now, that's in the spontaneous reaction. What happens if we did the reaction and the hydrogen electrode did not did not act spontaneously as the anode. It did not want to undergo oxidation. It wanted to do reduction. Well, example would be looking at zinc. Okay, if I took the zinc electrode and connected it to hydrogen electrode, what happens is the zinc wants to be oxidized, be the anode, and hydrogen wants to be reduced. Okay, well, when you do that, you come up with 0.76 volts of energy. Okay. Well, we didn't give that 0.76 all to the zinc, okay, because of the fact it's not by definition what we wanted. We want the hydrogen as the anode, so that meant that we need the reciprocal, okay. So in essence, we said that if we were going to do force this reaction with hydrogen being the anode and zinc being the cathode, then it would take a negative 0.76 volts. And that's how we get negatives in the table, okay. Basically, the spontaneous reaction was the opposite reaction. So we took that voltage and put a negative sign in front of it. Since zinc acts as the anode, the oxidation in a spontaneous process, its reduction potential then is listed as a negative 0.76 volts. This means that zinc has a potential that is 0.76 volts less than that of hydrogen. Remember, a relative scale, not an absolute. So all these potentials were done in, ter in reference of hydrogen. Any voltage that was given to it was given uh, got was attained was given to the other species. If it's a spontaneous reaction where hydrogen electrode was an anode, it was given all that voltage. If it was not a spontaneous reaction as hydrogen is the anode, then we basically gave it a negative voltage. Standard electro potentials are useful in determining the strengths of oxidizing and reducing agents under standard conditions. Remember I told you I'll eventually tell you how you can look at a reaction and say what's going to be a spontaneous reaction. The strongest oxidizing agent, meaning that species undergoing reduction, 
in a table of standard electron potentials are the species corresponding to the half reactions with the largest, meaning most positive, uh, potential values. For example, in our table that I showed you earlier, F2 gas had the highest E, the largest E. Therefore, it is the strongest oxidizing agent in the table. It wants to undergo reduction with any other species in that table. Okay, It is the strongest oxidizing agent. Fluorine gas wants to undergo reduction, and everything else will be reduced, uh, oxidized in, it, in its connection. Okay? It will always be reduced in a spontaneous reaction with any one of those species in that table. Bottom line, the larger your E, the stronger your oxidizing agent, more tendency to undergo reduction with other species. So the larger the E, the stronger the oxidizing agent, more tendency to undergo reduction. So the species with the larger E will be reduced, the species with the smaller E will be oxidized. Let's go back to the table. Okay, that fluorine gas going to fluorine minus, okay, is 2.87 volts. Okay, you can see it's 2.87 volts. That is the largest number on this table. So what we're saying is, if I take that fluorine gas in connection with any other species on this table in a spontaneous reaction, fluorine gas will be a case that it will be reduced, and any other species on this table will be oxidized. So that makes that fluorine gas an oxidizing agent and then the strongest oxidizing agent in this table. Okay, meaning it's going to oxidize anything else it's with. Okay, that is the strongest oxidizing agent on this table. So if we go back to our previous example at the beginning of this chapter, remember we talked about copper and silver, and I told you that if I take a piece of copper metal and stick it in silver solution, that a spontaneous reaction is going to occur and silver is going to want to be reduced and copper is going to be oxidized. Well, I can determine that by looking at the electron potential volts. Okay, you look at it, I got 0.8 voltage for my silver reduction, and I'm comparing my copper reduction is 0.34. Okay, since silver's reduction is 0.8, it's larger than a 0.34, it's going to want to be reduced. Okay, it's going to want to be reduced in a spontaneous reaction. And copper is going to want to be oxidized. So what happens is we get copper going to copper 2 plus being oxidized and silver plus going to silver in a spontaneous reaction. The larger E will be reduced and the smaller E will be oxidized, okay, in a spontaneous reaction. It doesn't mean I can't make the other one happen. I can make copper reduced and silver oxidized, but I have to put voltage into the system to make that happen, okay? That's not the spontaneous reaction. Now, what happens if I'm comparing two negative numbers, okay, say magnesium and cadmium here, and I wanted to figure out which one's going to be in a spontaneous reaction, which one's going to be reduced, and which one's going to be oxidized, well, it's just the most positive number, basically the one closest to zero, okay, in the situation when I'm comparing two negative numbers. Since cadmium is a negative 0.4 and the magnesium is a negative 2.38, then cadmium is going to want to be reduced, okay, it's going to be the better oxidizing agent, and magnesium is going to be oxidized, okay, where magnesium is the better reducing agent, okay, so in this situation, we're saying that the cadmium is going to be reduced. The cadmium 2 plus is going to be reduced. Okay, so it's going to be a reduction. It's the better oxidizing agent. And in my magnesium solid, okay, it's going to be oxidized. It's the better reducing agent. So consequently, looking on the other side of the coin now, the strongest reducing agent, meaning that species undergoing oxidation in the table of standard potentials, or the species corresponding to the half reaction with the smallest, most negative uh, potential values. For example, in that table I showed you, lithium is the smallest E on the table. It had a negative uh, value. Therefore, lithium solid is my strongest reducing agent. Notice you must flip the reaction. Remember, it's all is reductions, and it's lithium plus going to lithium solid. Lithium plus is not my reducing agent. Lithium solid. I got to flip the reaction as a oxidation. 
Okay, and that species is my reducing agent. So if I compare that to any other species in that table, the other species are going to re be reduced and lithium is going to be oxidized. Bottom line, the smaller the E, the stronger the reducing agent, the more tendency to undergo oxidation with the other species. So the smaller E is the stronger reducing agent and will be the one that undergoes oxidation. The other species will undergo reduction. Going back to our table. Okay, in this table, since my lithium has a negative 3.04, my lithium ion, that's going to end up being my species that's going to want to go undergo oxidation in comparison to anything else in this table. And realize that since it's an oxidation, you're going to flip that reaction. So the actual species that's the reducing agent is lithium solid. It's going to go from lithium solid to lithium plus, which is an oxidation. And then any other species below it will undergo reduction as it's written in this table. So, let's see if we can do this now. What would be the spontaneous reaction between cadmium and silver? And I want you to calculate the potential of that cell, okay, at 25 degrees C and one molarity, meaning a standard cell. Now, I'm looking for the spontaneous reaction between cadmium and silver. I could have just as well asked for the non-spontaneous reaction, electrolytic, so don't get the idea that I'm always looking for the larger E to be reduced, okay? It's a case of what's the question asking for? I'm asking for what is the spontaneous reaction. So I want to compare my cadmium silver and look to see which one in a spontaneous reaction will tend to be reduced and the other one oxidized. So you go to your table and look at your values and these, these are both written as reductions, okay? Straight from the table, I got cadmium two plus, plus two electrons gives me cadmium salad and there's a potential of a negative 0.4 volts. I have silver plus one electron gives me silver solid and has a potential of 0.80 volts. So I need to figure out for a spontaneous reaction because that's what the question is asking for, a spontaneous one. Which one of these then will be reduced and which one will be oxidized? Well, since silver has the larger E in a spontaneous reaction, it's the one that's going to be reduced. So we're going to tend to reduce this one, which means I'm going to use that equation just like it is. And then cadmium would be oxidized. Okay, which means then that silver plus is my oxidizing agent and cadmium solid is my reducing agent. Now I've got to flip the oxidation. So H plus has a higher E, therefore expect it to be reduced, meaning an oxidizing agent, and cadmium solid be an oxidizing, meaning a reducing agent in a spontaneous reaction. Now, if I were to ask for a non-spontaneous reaction, we'd be saying the opposite. Okay, I'd be looking for cadmium to be reduced and silver to be oxidized. Therefore, you reverse the half reaction and change the sign for our potential of our cadmium. So I did that. So now I got it written as an oxidation, cadmium solid going to cadmium 2 plus. So I had to change the sign of my voltage, which is a positive now. I need to balance my equation. I got two electrons being given up in my oxidation and only one in my uh, reduction, so I got to multiply by two. Okay, so I must double the silver reaction um, to get my electron to cancel. However, when I do multiply by two, I do not affect the voltage, right? So I am not going to multiply that 0.8 by two. This does not affect the half cell potentials. Okay, remember it's an intensive property. So now I add the two equations together. So now I have my cadmium, cadmium two plus two electrons, which is a positive 0.4 volts. And I have my two silver pluses, two electrons and two silver solids because I multiply by two. But my voltage stayed 0.8. I did not multiply it by two. Okay, it stayed the same 0.28, uh, 0.8 volts. My electrons will cancel. Add up my equations, okay. And I get cadmium solid plus two silver pluses gives me cadmium two plus and two silver solids. The E of this cell then, I would add up to E's. And I get an E of the cell is 1.2 volts. Now this is the potential for a standard cell. 
Okay, this is for a standard cell. It's a positive voltage, so that means it's a spontaneous reaction. Okay, which means it's a voltaic cell or galvanic cell. I didn't mention anything about standard cell, okay, but since it's all one molarity, okay, this would be the voltage of that cell. If I was a non-standard cell, meaning I didn't have one molarity of silver ions or cadmium ions, then I'll have to take this voltage and do more work. I'll take this value and I gotta do some more to it, okay, which we'll talk about later. Okay. How would you write and draw the cell we just did? Okay, in short notation. So how would I write this in short notation? Well, you got to write, okay, on the left side, um, what's being oxidized. So I'd have to write my cadmium on that side. So I'd have to have my cadmium solid, okay, as my ele terminal electrode. And then my cadmium solution, which we said is one molarity. I got to draw my little line, straight line, to mean phase difference. Then I can draw a double line for my salt bridge. And then I have my silver plus going to silver solid. So I have my silver, my concentration, one molarity, single line, meaning phase change, and my silver electro. If I wanted to draw this as a cell, I do my two cells, my oxidation, my anode, and my reduction cathode. I draw my cadmium solid electrode and my cadmium solution. Draw my silver solid as my electrode. In my silver solution it has a salt bridge, so I put that in. And my electrons are going to flow from my anode to my cathode, so I draw that connection, showing my electrons flowing that way. And in my anode, I would have a negative terminal and a positive terminal at my cathode. This is how you would draw the cell for a standard cell. All right, let's calculate the standard EMF, the E of the cell, for the following. I got aluminum solid, aluminum 3 plus at 1 molarity, iron 2 plus at 1 molarity, iron solid. Since I have 1 molarities here, this is a, and it's at 25 degrees C, this is a standard cell. So all I got to do is calculate my E of the cell, and I have my value. If these were not 1 molarity, then I got to do more work after I do this to get to that non-standard cell. So here's my table. Okay, I have aluminum 3 plus going to aluminum. It has an E associated with it as a negative 1.66 volts. And I have iron 2 going to iron, which is a negative 0.41 volts. Okay, so this has nothing to do with what's a spontaneous or non spontaneous reaction. I have no choice in the matter. This is giving me in short notation. So this is telling me that aluminum is either oxidized or reduced based on where it's located in my short notation. So I could overall be a spontaneous reaction or it could be a non-spontaneous reaction. It depends if I'm talking about voltaic or electrolytic cell. So this short notation is going to dictate what's being oxidized, what's being reduced. Since aluminum is on my left side, what's happening to it? It's being oxidized based on short notation, which means I'm going to take this equation, the aluminum 3 going to aluminum, and do what with it since it's written as a reduction? I'm going to flip it and change the sign. And on the right side, what's happening to the ion is to reduction, that's my cathode, so I'll use that equation just like it's written. Now based on that, do are we going to talk about a spontaneous or non-spontaneous reaction? Well, looking at what's here, since my larger, my more positive number, okay, in this case negative 0 0.14, 0 0.41 is closer to zero than a negative 1.66, since that value is going to undergo a reduction, the one, the larger one closest to zero, okay, in this case since I'm dealing with two negative numbers, is undergoing reduction, then it's going to be a spontaneous reaction. I expect this to give me a positive voltage when I'm finished cal uh, calculating, okay, because of the fact that it's uh, the more positive one, more larger one, is closer to, is um, undergoing reduction. So I have my givens. I have my aluminum 3 plus and iron 2, and I'm going to take the iron 3 and flip it, and my iron 2 I'm going to bring down just like it is. So I'll take my oxygen, 
my oxidation, so I flip my reaction, my aluminum three solid going to aluminum three plus, give me three electrons. And since I did that, what did I do to my potential? I changed the sign. Remember up here, it is a negative as a reduction. But then I come down here, I flip the reaction, so now I gotta change the sign. And then I'll take the iron and I'll bring it over just like it is. Okay, iron two plus a two electron gives me iron solid. Okay, it has potential as a negative 0.41 volt. Now I want to add these equations up, so I need the number of electrons to be the same. Okay, since I got three given up and two coming on, I need to multiply my oxidation by two and my reduction by three. So I multiply the aluminum by two and I multiply the iron by three. When I do that, I get two aluminums, gives me two aluminum three pluses plus six electrons. Uh, three aluminum, three iron twos plus six electrons gives me three irons. Okay, so now I have my electrons are the same, so I can cancel them out. But what did I do to the potentials though, as I multiply by two? When I multiply all aluminum by two, did I do anything to the potential? No, notice it's exactly the same. Okay, I did not change the potential. What about the iron? I multiply by three. So I got three irons, six electrons, three irons. Did I do anything to the potential? No, I left it exactly the same. I didn't multiply by any factor. Okay, so they all stayed the same. So now I can add up my reactions. Okay, when I add them up, see my electrons will cancel out. And then I did not, note that I did not multiply by a factor to the E either. Okay, so I add up my reactions. I get two aluminum solids plus three iron twos. Give me two aluminum threes plus three irons. And I add up my E's. I get 1.66 plus a negative 0.41, which gives me an E of 1.25 volts. This is the potential of this of a standard cell. Is this a standard cell? Yes. We had the one molarity for my iron and the one molarity for my aluminum. Therefore it's a standard cell. So this is the E of my cell. It is a positive value, so therefore it's a voltaic cell. Okay. It's a spontaneous reaction as we predicted because of the fact that we said that the larger E will undergo a reduction. So it's a spontaneous reaction because I obtained a positive voltage. And we said it's a standard cell because it was one molarity in aluminum and one molarity in iron. Homework 49 deals with calculations of standard cells. Okay, and asks you questions about uh, what's a better reducing agent, what's a better oxidizing agent uh, type questions.